we have seen in the earlier video that it is the job of the CPU scheduler to assign the CPU to one of the processes which are available in the ready queue. So let's suppose say P3 was running on the CPU and now P3 has to go for an event or the time slice of P3 has expired. So the CPU will be released and now this CPU has to be assigned to some other process by the scheduler. So suppose now the CPU is being assigned to process P1. This, this whole uh, scenario when the CPU switches from one process to another, this is known as a context switch. So what all happens during the context switch? First of all, the state of the old process will be saved. So P3 was running currently and the state of process P3 will be saved in the process control block of P3. So what is a process control block? You can check my earlier video on this. And this contains information about the contents of the register, the uh, number of open files, the, uh, the value in the program counter. So all that information which is available in the process control block data structure of P3, it will be saved so that it can be used later when that process will be executed again. So the state of P3 has been saved. Now for the new process coming in, say let's say P1, the state for this new process will be loaded. This is called state restore. So the whatever was the information in the process control block of process P1 that will be now loaded into the system. So whatever were the contents of the registers which were associated with process P1 that means whichever registers P1 was using earlier what was their value so th that will be loaded what is the program counter value that will be loaded the information about the open files that the process is using that will be loaded. If it is a new process, then the values of the program counter would be put in the system. So all of these things are done during the context switch. So when why do we call it a context switch? Because the context is represented in the process control block and the system is switching from one context. That means the information stored in one PCB to another context that means it is taking information from another process control block. Now the time that is taken by this context switch this is a pure overhead on the system. At this time the system is not doing any particular useful work that means the CPU is sitting idle during this time and the more complex the operating system and the process control block the longer time the context switch will take because now more information will have to be saved and restored for the new process. It is also time dependent on the hardware suppose support. So why do we say that it is time dependent on hardware support? Suppose there is a system which has multiple set of registers per CPU. So this is a one register file with number of registers R1, R2, R3 so this is a register file and if there is another set of registers, another register file. So if this kind of hardware is available then what needs to be done is that when a, there is a context switch a pointer can simply be updated to either point to the register file for being used for P3 and if there is a context switch now it can point to the register file which was being used by pointer 1. If this is the kind of support hardware support that is being provided then all these values of registers will not have to be updated in the PCB. Had there been only one set of registers 
registers available in the system then all the values of these registers will have to be stored in the PCB of P3 before the contents of the new process register contents of the new process P1 can be loaded into the register file. Now the context switch can be of two types either it can be a voluntary context switch that means the process itself is giving up the control of the CPU. Now this could be because now that the uh, process has to go for some input output and the input output device is not currently available so it is waiting for it. So if it is blocking for IO then it will release the CPU and this is a voluntary con context switch and now the CPU can be allocated to some other process. In case of a non-voluntary context switch that means the system takes away the CPU from the process. So there is a possibility that the process was given the CPU for a particular time slice and that time slice has expired or a higher priority process has come in. So the CPU will be taken away from the process and given to some other process. So this is a non-voluntary context switch. Now the processes which are available in the system they can be broadly described as input output bound processes or CPU bound processes. A input output bound process it will spend most of its time doing input output rather than doing computations. You take an example of a video game which waits for inputs from the user. So there is a lot of input output going on and not a lot of computation. So there will be many short CPU bursts and more time would be spent in doing the input output. A CPU burst means the time that is for which the CPU is required. So the CPU for the computation will be required for a very short time and most of the time input output will be done. Then we have CPU bound processes. These processes, these kind of processes, they are uh, spending most of the time on the CPU. So they are doing computations and there are very few IO requests. So the time that would be required for the CPU burst that would be larger as compared to an input output bound process. So an example of this could be the scientific computations that are done. So they would spend most of their time using the CPU for the computation. Now the objective of the system is to maximize the CPU utilization and that can be obtained only when we have multiple programs available in the main memory. Now if we look at the CPU input output burst cycle of any particular process then this whole execution is cycle com comprises of a cycle of CPU execution and some input output wait. So there would be a set of instructions and any process which is executing these set of instructions it will require the CPU so this, this would be referred to as a CPU burst. Then it will wait for input output and this would be referred this is referred to as an input output burst. Then again some set of instructions will be executed during the CPU burst again some input output during the input output burst again a set of instructions executed on CPU during the CPU burst and so on. So any process that we have in the system consists of a cycle of CPU burst followed by IO burst followed by CPU burst and so on. So consider this process P0 which was exec executing so, so and now there was a interrupt or a system call. So when this process which was executing and an interrupt has achieved uh, has been received by the operating system what will the system uh, operating system do? It will save the state of the process P0 into the process control block of PCB process P0 which is PCB 0 
it will reload the state from PCB1 which is referring to the process 1. Now during this time this is the part which is referring to the context switch and now the operating system will hand over the control of the CPU to process P1. So P1 will start executing. During this time of context switch process P0 is also idle and process P1 is also idle. So P1 was executing once it has done with its CPU burst now. Now again it will give a call to the system that it no longer requires the CPU because it has to go for some an IO. Now, now the state of process P1 will be saved and the state of process P0 will be loaded. We are assuming that there are only two processes in the ready queue currently and P0 was available in the ready queue and now P0 will start executing. So we can see that this whole cycle of CPU burst and IO burst it allows the system to utilize the CPU to the maximum. So we can see that process when P0 was executing there was a CPU burst here. When it wants to go for an IO burst then the same CPU can be assigned now to process P1. So multi-programming has helped us achieve utilizing the CPU to the maximum. Once P1 goes for uh, its IO burst over here, then P0 can be given the CPU during its CPU burst over here. So in this way, because of this CPU IO burst cycle of the processes, CPU can be utilized to its maximum capacity.